Hi, it's Mike Del Signore. I'm a Massachusetts OUI lawyer and I handle a lot of cases out of Woburn District Court. And in today's video, I wanna talk about what happens if you're charged with a first offense OUI and the case is gonna be heard in the Woburn District Court. So you should know a few things uh, about the Woburn District Court. They hear cases from Burlington, uh, Winchester, Woburn, and state police, a lot of arrests from state police. Uh, so there's a lot of highways that come through uh, the Woburn area. So uh, if you're facing an OUI charge, what you first thing you want to know is can you win the case so you probably heard about this term continuance without a finding well continuance without a finding is not a dismissal some people wrongly think that the case is going to get dismissed if they take a continuance without a finding but in court terms you'll hear that they'll say the case will be continued continued for a year and after that period will be dismissed but it's not a it's not like you won the OUI case it's still an admission that you admitted to driving under the influence of alcohol it'll count as a first offense conviction the benefit of the continuance without a finding is that it's technically not a conviction so for some job purposes it may not show up for many it still will show up a lot of jobs can see continuances without a finding so don't make the mistake of thinking that you took a continuance without a finding that you didn't admit to OUI so how can you win these cases? Well, we win these cases routinely because they're subjective opinions of the officers. Officers are basing their opinions on, on their opinion that you're under the influence of alcohol, and that comes from them looking at your eyes, smelling alcohol, and judging your balance and coordination. Often they, they don't have much of a basis to judge you. Uh, an officer saying you have slurred speech who's never heard you speak before. You might be one of those people that don't speak loud. You might mumble. You might, when you're confronted with an officer, you may be nervous. So an officer's opinion doesn't have a baseline. Um, they might say you're unsteady on your feet. Well, the, an officer needs to know what's your balance like norm, normally. Do, are you someone that has medical problems uh, with your knees, legs, and back? And this is all things that we can present to the court to show that the way the officer arrived at this opinion that you were under the influence of alcohol wasn't based on sound evidence, wasn't based on science, and shouldn't be trusted when you have to prove the case to the high degree they have to prove it in court. So to arrest you, they need a very little, a low level of proof. It's maybe at your kneecap. To prove a case beyond a reasonable doubt, it's a much higher burden of proof. And it has to be to the highest degree of certainty in the matters of human affairs. Think about how you, you, you go about your day every day and how you probably have gone about today. You probably never had to make a decision to the highest degree of certainty. When, you make, when we make decisions in our life, we make decisions about what's practical, what's better. We don't make decisions to the highest degree of certainty in the matter of human affairs. If we did, we wouldn't be able to make uh, decisions. So keep that in mind that a criminal charge has to be proven to this high degree of near moral certainty for it to be proven beyond a reasonable doubt and you're presumed innocent on the charge. So why is this opinion, these opinions are, are very subjective um, and officer, officers often don't perform the field sobriety test correctly. So it gives us as defense attorneys a lot of ways to fight and challenge these cases in court. We can one, challenge the way the officer administered the field sobriety test, show that they didn't do it according to their training. A lot of officers think you gotta lift your legs six to eight inches off the ground on the one leg stand. It's, it's really only six inches. So they're, they're telling people to lift it higher than this taught to in the train. A lot of officers don't remember that you actually don't have to bang your feet together on the nine step walk and turn. There can be a space between your heel and toe and it's not counted against you. Most officers don't remember that. So you have these tests that they give and they kind of just give their own spin on them. They're not giving them according to their police training. So keep that in mind, Be make sure that before you admit to an OUI, you understand what field sobriety tests are, what they're looking for, and how they're supposed to be administered. If you have any questions about an OUI in Woburn District Court, feel free to contact me. My name is Michael Del Signore. You can call me on my cell anytime. It's never too early, too late to call 781-686-5924.